Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our NMIS Insights webinar on NMIS's Manufacturing Skills Academy. If you don't mind bearing with us for a few moments, just till we allow the audience time to connect. Thank you. Welcome to those who have just joined us. If you don't mind just bearing with us for a moment and we'll get started in a, in a couple of minutes. Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much for your patience. And we'll now get started on today's webinar. And I'll just hand you over to the Manufacturing Skills Academy Skills Director, Stuart McKinley. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. And, and thank you to everyone who's taken part today. Um, we're really looking forward to having a, a conversation with you and sharing um, with you. Um, next slide, please. Uh, we've got a strong lineup for you today. Um, Dorothy Evans, Jim Hannigan and Jose Hernandez. Uh, a really strong team at the Manufacturing Skills Academy, uh, and as I'm Stuart McKinley. In terms of housekeeping, um, this is being recorded and you're given your permission to do that by taking part. Um, your mics and webcams will be turned off. If you've got any questions, we'd welcome those and you can go through the, the chat tool and we will have time at the end of the session as well. Um, we're happy if people want to use the hashtag for any questions or to promote the activity. Um, and we'd be really keen to hear your thoughts afterwards. If you complete the survey, the only way we can get better is if we get feedback. Thank you for that. Next slide. So what is the National Manufacturing Institute? It's a group of industry-led manufacturing development facilities where research industry and the public sector work together um, to transform skills, productivity and innovation to attract investment and make Scotland the global leader in advanced manufacturing. And on the beer face of that, it almost seems a bit dry, but actually it's a very exciting prospect. And we're really delighted to see a, you know, a large number of employers here today, both large and small, um, BAE, Boeing, GE, Caledonian, uh, Chromacity, E2B Innovate, 1PLM to name a few. But of course, we also, and part of our role as ENMIS is to bring all of Scotland and the manufacturing community together. So we're equally delighted to see around a dozen universities and colleges across Scotland and key stakeholders, including councils, Scottish Enterprise and SEED. Uh, and we're even attracting an audience from as far afield as Indonesia. So what will NMIS do? NMIS will increase productivity, a long-standing problem in Scotland, stimulate investment, catalyse job creation and strengthen supply chain links. Uh, and probably the most important part for us today is inspiring and attracting talent and equipping the current and future workforces. Um, and we will work with manufacturing businesses of all sizes. We are sector agnostic. Of course, we will help specific sectors, um, but we're keen to help and work across the whole of Scotland. Next slide, thank you. So NMIS, and this is a really important slide because it is supported right across the length and breadth of Scotland from Scottish Government. Scottish Enterprise, Highlands and Islands, um, the Catapult, Scottish Funding Council, SDS, their local Renfrewshire Council, and down to the south of Scotland Enterprise. So NMIS is a national asset, and that's a really important, and we're operated by the University of Strathclyde. So the NMIS group itself is a combination, and many of you may have heard of the AFRC or are actually visited. And that is now a specialist centre within the NMIS portfolio. Um, and equally, the lightweight manufacturing centre is the same. Um, going forward, the building itself will be up towards the, the back end of next year. And you can see it behind most of our images and what it will look like when it's finished. And we're looking forward to moving in. But that hasn't stopped us engaging in a lot of activity. Uh, and today, obviously, we're talking about the Manufacturing Skills Academy and what we are doing there as we move towards the building and beyond that. Next slide, please. So, of course, there are challenges and opportunities uh, aplenty. And so how do we balance that situation where we've got at one end of the spectrum, you know, some of the most advanced manufacturing companies like Red Bull, 
making 10,000 engineering changes a month and the digital infrastructure and systems you need to support that. And balancing that against the practicalities for many firms with a you know time for training, how do we actually ensure that people get that time? And the culture around about when people stop learning, um, you, you factor in the, you know, the age demographics um, and, and the shortage of technician level STEM skills. And even before all that, um, we had the age profile and the, and the present you know, skill shortages before then. And also those have been exacerbated by COVID and, and the EU departure. And on top of all that, clearly we have the whole net zero agenda, um, the green jobs, and um, importantly, the greening of existing jobs as well, and that's sometimes overlooked. NMIS and the Manufacturing Skills Academy are working right across the whole of Scotland to support. So you can see some of the uh, other universities we're working with just now, some of the other institutions, but equally we're working with other bodies such as SQA, Skills Development Scotland, uh, and working on the National Occupational Standards, supporting activity from the Cromarty Firth uh, with UHI down to Borderlands and including MSIP uh, as, as well. And we'll touch on some of those later on. So we've recently just held a huge visioning, visioning session, easy for me to say, with all the um, staff in Enmis. And one of the clear things that came out of that was a kind of burning passion for us to help support and enable the whole manufacturing community. So how do we help SMEs? How do we help traditional employers who may not perceive themselves as being in that industry 4.0 space? And how do we help individuals who've maybe been affected or are likely to be affected by the impacts of, of COVID and the EU departure? And so without further ado, there are some answers coming up and I will hand you over to Jose Hernandez. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jose Hernandez and I am the NMIS CPD manager. I am responsible for managing the portfolio of training programs that we will offer through the Manufacturing Skills Academy. We are a relatively young business unit. We started operating over a year ago, and in the last year, we have achieved a lot of progress. And the purpose of my presentation today is to share with you some of that progress, but to tell you that we are open for business and we are here to support. Next slide, please. The support that we currently have available is thanks to a couple of major programs that we're currently working on. So the first one is the National Transition Training Fund. This is a program for government which is aimed at supporting people age 25 and over to develop the skills that are needed to move into sectors with growth potential and also to create future job opportunities. We're also working on an advanced manufacturing challenge fund project. This is European funding aimed at creating online training materials to help SMEs across all manufacturing sectors with skill support in the areas of digital manufacturing and leadership. We have a team that is currently working on developing a lot of content from awareness level to more technical, uh, practical implementation. Next slide, please. These programs have a lot of synergy, but there are some differences. A National Transition Training Fund, as we mentioned, is aimed at individuals. So the objective is to support upskilling, reskilling, and future-proofing efforts. We're trying to improve the, the background, the profile of individuals. This is a short and sharp intervention. The program was launched in April 2021. At the end of April 2021, we have launched nine courses to support individuals, and it, it, the, the program will come to an end in August 2021. This program has been very successful, and we're already in conversations with government about a second phase. So watch this space. Uh, Advancing Manufacturing Challenge Fund is different because of its target audience. This program is aimed at manufacturing SMEs and it's, uh, the, the idea is of a more strategic intervention opportunity. The objective of the project is to build company-wide digital manufacturing competencies. So we're, we're adopting a more holistic approach to the training opportunity. The delivery format for AMCF is primarily online and because we're currently working on developing this content, the program will come to an end to the end of 2023. However, our ambition is to make sure that the, a majority of the content libraries will be available by the end of summer so that we can maximize the, the benefits of the program. Next slide. In terms of what this means for you, well, we, we currently have a lot of opportunities of support available. 
We will offer training support in the form of short, short courses. And if you look at our website, you'll be able to see some of the courses that we currently have available. NTTF is supporting mainly the delivery of virtual programs and webinars like the one that we're hosting today. AMCF will help us with the online digital content libraries and case studies, which will be disseminated through our manufacturing skills platform. In addition to this training support, we also provide one-to-one -one support for SMEs. And this is in the form of a digital manufacturing skills assessment that the Manufacturing Skills Academy team has, has developed thanks to the AMCF project. The objective of, of this digital assessment is to help have more quality conversations with our industrial partners to help identify the opportunities to understand the, your direction of travel and to help us prioritize the opportunities for training for your, for your workforce. The, one of the direct outcomes of, of this uh, intervention is the design of a bespoke workforce training plan. So we will work together with your organization to identify the skills gaps and then working with you, we will be able to put training plans in place to kind of mitigate those skills gaps. And one final support here that is not listed, but it's of course something that we will be doing for, for every interaction is we'll be signpost, signposting to the, the right uh, supporting mechanisms, whether it's within ENMIS or within the, the ENMIS group or the wider ENMIS network. And uh, if you can click twice, Dorothy, please. These are all the areas where we are currently we're, we're planning to develop support and we're already building content in some of these areas. Next slide, please. NTTF program benefits. Well, it's all about building skills and knowledge, helping individuals enhance their CV and employability prospects. But at the end of the day, delegates that sign up to the courses will be able to access free training courses and it's high quality training. A majority of these courses are accredited. As you can see, I took this snapshot from, from our website and there are many opportunities for you to, to engage in, in upskilling efforts. It's worth mentioning that although these courses are offered free of charge, there is a significant value associated with these programs. Uh, the, the price for, for the ranges from 200 pounds to 500 pounds per day per delegate. So the, the support uh, opportunity is, is significant. So if you can think of anybody that could benefit from some upskilling, or if, uh, um, if, if you yourself are interested in, in finding out about more of these opportunities, please uh, go into our website and you will see a full list of programs. And we'll be running this until the end of uh, July, beginning of August. Next slide, please. AGMC program benefits. Well, we talked about this being a more strategic opportunity. The, our objective is to help organizations make better informed technology investments when it comes to digital manufacturing uh, projects. And it's all about making companies more efficient and more productive. And we, re and we recognize that the workforce is a key pillar to, to achieving this. So let's help you to upskill your workforce and better manage and exploit digital disruption. Our team, as I mentioned, is actively working on creating online libraries. And our plan is to launch our manufacturing skills platform at the end of this month. Next slide, please. Instead of, instead of showing you, um, instead of, instead of showing you snapshots of our platform, we, we put together a video. I just have to apologize because we have some issues with the audio. So I'm going to talk over the, the video. So Dorothy, you're going to press play, please. So delegates will need to register to access our online platform and registration delegates will receive an email that will take them to this signing page. So once you sign in, you will get access to our platform. So this is what delegates will see. Delegates will be able to browse content as with any other learning management system by going to the library that we will have there. As you can see, we have a range of courses here. And depending on the entry route, some delegates will be assigned the specific courses. So we created this false account and this individual has been assigned five courses. They have already, sorry, six courses. They have completed one of those five. And below uh, the delegate will be able to see the courses that he has been assigned to complete. So we'll show you an example of what a, a course looks like. So this is the course that the delegate completed, but we can show you. So this is the landing page for the course. And if we scroll down, you will see all the different lessons that the delegate will have to complete in order to complete the course and achieve its certification. 
So let's go into the course. We have used our pedagogical expertise to create meaningful learning experience. We're using a range of assets like video, text, and there's a lot of interactive tools that we can build into the platform to make this a, a very engaging experience. Delegates will have to go through a process like this one to, to be, a, to be a, to, to, so, so that they can proceed to the next stages. And as you can see, there's, there's many interactive opportunities that we're showing you here, but of course we can do a lot more. The interactivity is very important, but more than interactivity, the content is king. And we're working with experts in the field internally and externally to help make sure the courses are really useful for delegates. So hopefully this gives you a, a quick idea of some of the support that is available. If you would like to find out more about our platform and uh, if you would like to be informed when we launch, please, please get in touch. And if you want to, to have access to the NTTF programs, have a look online, but we'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. I will now hand over to my colleague, Dorothy. Good morning, and thank you very much for joining today. Um, I'm Dorothy Evans, and I look after the Advanced Manufacturing Industrial Doctorate Center. Um, originally, the Industrial Doctorate Center started in 2011, where it was funded by the Engineering Physical Sciences Research Council. Um, we were focusing just on forming and forging for the Advanced Forming Research Center. Um, our target was to um, get 32 studentships on board, and they were all focused on engineering doctorates. Um, I'm pleased to say we hit the targets and um, got all 32 NGDs. Um, and then when with most um, sort of funded student um, studentships, they all come to an end. So what we would decided to do was um, to actually continue with um, sustaining the doctorate department by looking at different mechanisms of funding in order for it to continue. So we then expanded our range more into PhDs, NGDs and industrial doctorates. And um, we now have a further 62 studentships which are funded by various sources. And they are all undertaking research which are with all the capabilities that we offer by ENMIS. When the NGD started, it was a one plus three model, which meant the first year of the studentship, they would undertake this by doing a master's program within the university. And then three years would then be focused on doing the actual PhD research. With us offering now the three and the three and a half and four year PhDs, students can come in and hit research basically hit the ground running with the research that they're doing with um, our companies. We also offer industrial doctorates whereby um, companies who have employees that want to do a PhD can undertake that through the NMIS program. A four-year engineering doctorate costs around about £90,000 over the four years. And between three, three and a half and four years, a PhD is between 62 and 84,000 um, for the duration of the studentships. And to undertake an industrial doctorate, it's around about 11,000 pound per annum. The costs I've just given are based on home students, which we call within the UK. Um, unfortunately, due to uh, Brexit, um, EU students are um, now falling into the bracket of an international students, um, whereby the fees would be substantially more than what the home fees are. Um, and normally you would find that quite a few students who do apply, they themselves would like to pay the difference in order to come over and study and do a PhD or an NGD within um, the UK. We also ask companies to contribute a further one and a half to two thousand pound per annum which is to cover costs such as consumables and travel and conferences for the student for the duration of their study 
the impact with regards to undertaking research um, at this scale from an industry perspective is the fact that that we um, have a joint collaborative research. Um, there's academic engagement for the companies, plus you get yourself an early career researcher, which is also future leaders for the companies. Um, knowledge exchange, as well as access to the world-class facilities that we have within the National Manufacturing Institute for Scotland throughout all of the centres from an academic perspective, the same as industry, as well as producing conference papers and journals and other research opportunities. From a student perspective, they get exactly the same as what um, industry and academia are getting out of it, as well as um, finishing with a doctorate, engaging with real world research and skills, uh, transfer transferable and employability skills, as well as employment within industry or uh, within acad academia. Um, and pleased to say that also within ENMIS that we've actually recruited quite a lot of our students who have undertaken research with us. There's some opportunities with regards to funding towards uh, the studentships that we offer within ENMIS. Um, Enmis itself, we can um, get companies who uh, we can help and assist with some funding up to about 40% of the overall studentship. We have uh, many initiatives within the university where we offer um, some studentship funding to go towards um, three to three and a half year studentships. Um, we also recently had a strategic research partnership engagement call, which at the moment is currently closed. Um, but we do keep on top on making sure that if there is any funding calls available, we would advertise this to um, all of our uh, partners as well as new industries. And we're undergoing a change within our website where we are going to be launching an open call. Um, and then we also work with other institutions who are keen to work with industry and universities that also offer um, other mechanisms of funding to be able to help companies um, fund studentships. Some of the areas that we have with regards to our research that we offer within the centres uh, near net shape manufacturing, such as additive, superplastic forming, uh, material behaviors, residual stress, data driven manufacturing, automation and digital, engineering management, process modeling, and product development and innovation. And there's much, much more other areas that we can help with. These are just some of the people that I currently work with and the students are um, undertaking their uh, PhD studentships. So if there's anything that you would like to ask, please do so on the Q&A site. And I'm now going to pass you over to my colleague, Jim. Thank you, Dorothy. Uh, and good morning to everybody else. Thanks for making the time to, uh, to join us. My name's Jim Hannigan. I'm head of skills Head of Skills Capability at Enmis, and I just want to give you a, a brief overview of a, a couple of initiatives that um, we've been working on within the Manufacturing Skills Academy recently, namely a Foundation Apprenticeship in Digital Manufacturing and a Graduate Placement Scheme under the National Transition Training Fund auspices. If I could have the next slide, please, so I say thanks. I thought it was probably best to give you a quick overview First of all, what a foundation apprenticeship actually is. Um, it was part of Scottish government's response to the Ian Wood report from the middle of the last decade around um, developing our young workforce. Uh, how do we get secondary phase pupils into the, into the workplace? Um, so as I said, the point is to gain some industry experience. You get a qualification in the process. Um, these apprenticeships are designed by employers, so we, we, we've got a supply and demand uh, dynamic going. Uh, you choose your foundation apprenticeship along with other school subject choices. Um, it's given the same credit as a hire, 
and it's recognised by all Scottish universities and colleges. And what it does is it takes you to learning the essential skills that employers value, and it also adds to your own personal proposition from respect to your, uh, your CV and your personal statement and give you that head start to get a modern apprenticeship or indeed move into university if that is what you choose to do. This is an important one for us because there has been a lot of um, research around um, sector attractiveness for manufacturing, um, particularly around the sort of Gen Z um, category. So it's important we start to influence that. Generation Z um, didn't really see manufacturing as a viable career choice. So we want to get in ahead of that at the, the, the secondary phase at the STEM level. Next slide, please, Dorothy. So I, I guess, suppose, how does it work? Um, you do spend a bit of time out of class with a learning provider, such as a college, where College Scotland, for example, is one, or a training provider. Um, you will work with the employer on real projects, and you'll be working with people who are in the workplace every day. Now, obviously, given the situation we're in at the moment, that may be virtually or it may be still in situ. And as you're doing that, you are assessed by the learning provider and the employer as you, as you go forward. Next slide, please, Dorothy. So initially through the, the Skills Academy, we ran this as a repertoire pilot. So some of the background is that the actual content was developed from the Foundation of Apprenticeship and Engineering. And anybody who completes our apprenticeship will get a, a, a certificate detailing the, the fact that we've studied the digital manufacturing components. There is the Industry Challenge Project and that's where we are going to add this sort of transformational element of EMIS. We're going to take a different approach to the content of the industrial project. We're going to look at incorporating and measuring meta skills. Clearly, net zero carbon is something that we have to, have to uh, adopt and embrace and understand fully from a skills perspective. And we'll do that by adding some carbon literacy elements that are currently being developed in, in Strathclyde, for example. We can introduce those to the, the content of the apprenticeship. Uh, this initial one, as I said, is a pilot, is, is delivered um, with West College Scotland, the Hampshire Council, and Skills Development in Scotland. Um, and we also reached out to leading Hampshire manufacturers to provide the placements that are required for the, the Foundation Apprenticeship students. And these opportunities exist at uh, AFRC, at Diageo, at the Lightweight Manufacturing Centre, and there's a few others and um, where we've made the connections within the EPSHIM. Obviously, the idea is, as we learn the lessons from this pilot, how do we roll it out nationally? Uh, and then beyond the foundation apprenticeship into the broader apprenticeship family and to modern apprenticeships and graduate apprenticeships, we'll be looking to incorporate the sophisticated equipment and machinery that will be in the digital factory within EMIS to start to inform the content within those apprenticeships. And as mentioned by Stuart, we have representation on the technical expert groups that are, are currently working on the, the development of those new apprenticeships. Now, the next slide, please, Dorothy. Um, you may have already seen this uh, advertised. It's a graduate placement scheme. It's targeted at getting unemployed graduates back into the workplace. Um, gives you the opportunity to undertake a fully paid six month placement. Um, you'll be placed with a Scotland based industrial partner, an SME or slightly larger manufacturing firm that has, has a problem to solve. Or you may indeed be, be placed with us at Inmis, whether in the digital factory or in the Skills Academy even, for example. What that will do is it will give you that vital work experience help you learn new skills, help you develop the skills you already have. And then that should give you a little bit of a kickstart of a career within advanced manufacturing. What we're doing at the moment is um, we are matching applicants based on their, their skill set to those types of problems that our um, industry partners have advised us that they have. So we're very excited about this, this one, obviously. Um, next slide, please, Dorothy. Um, I think Stuart mentioned at the start of the presentation, EMIS is a, is a, is a national asset. Um, so this is a pan-Scotland placement scheme. 
and defending where you are, you could be matched with industrial partners, Aberdeen, Highlands, Dumfries, or indeed one of our specialist technology centres around the country. Similar to the Foundation Apprenticeship Initiative, we do have a lot of organisations that have shown a lot of support so far. We probably have we've got quite a number of placements in development at the moment where we're just dotting I's and crossing T's on, on people being placed within some of these companies. Um, of course, given the, the economic objective of what we're doing here, there is some criteria. Uh, applicants should be aged 25 or over and, and struggling to find work within manufacturing. Um, they should have graduated recently in a STEM-related subject, and they should reside in Scotland. The application process is still open, um, and we will be given some consideration to those who apply that are under 25. Um, and similarly, we will be given uh, consideration to anybody who applies from a non-STEM-related um, um, discipline. And I think Stuart mentioned um, previously as well, we are looking to um, increase this scheme, its, its reach and its volume uh, in the coming year. Um, we had around 30 um, placements available this year. We're looking to increase that again. So really exciting. Um, again, if you're an employer, um, feel free to get in, get in touch with us to, to have a chat around expression of interest and what, it, um, what the detail is. And that's probably it from me. Um, I've been tasked with um, looking for the Q&A. We've had a couple of questions in the chat box, I think, that have been uh, answered by Stuart and Jose. But certainly if there's any others, please pop them in there. Um, and again, I think it's Jose and Dorothy both mentioned if there's anything you want to get in touch around, our details are on the screen at the moment. I'm more than happy to, to take things offline and, and have a chat through with you uh, on those subjects. Debbie, I don't know if um, we're getting any more questions. I think Stuart and Jose have fielded most of them. Um, I don't see any other questions at the moment, but I don't know if you have any sort of typical questions that you receive um, that you might want to address here in the webinar. I think, I think we're all, you know, we are all fairly active and, and um, obvious in the, the social media channels as well. So again, if there's anything that crosses crosses your minds around, around what you've seen today, um, please uh, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Um, I think as we've mentioned at the start of the presentation, feedback's really important for us because we'll, we'll, we won't learn to do better unless we get that, we get that feedback from you. Um, and as has been touched on, it's uh, it's uh, a national asset that's it's open to all. So I think um, Palms just dropped us a note there around the questions and answers. So um, some folk may have joined by phone and can't see them. Um, so we've had some questions around as a prospective manufacturing research student, can I avail the funding opportunities programs like NT? F and AMCF. Well, the, for both, support is open and flexible, uh, but each programme ha does have specific criteria for enrolment um, associated with the funding sources. But again, this is something that we'd be happy to happy to discuss with, with people further. It's important to recognise that these are, are, are Scottish government funded um, projects. So you know, the criteria around individuals and employers based in Scotland is, is quite um, strict. However, it might be worthwhile having a conversation with Dorothy on the, on the doctorate side. Um, can foundation apprenticeships only be accessed if the person is at school? I think that is the case, Debbie, but let me, let me check up on that one for you and I'll come back to you on that uh, offline. Um, 
Stuart has, has put in the, the chat box, uh, for those resident in Scotland and unemployed or at risk of redundancy, the next CPD course coming up is Managing Organisational Subcultures for Successful Collaboration. And we have some spaces available and the links are there. Again, if you can't see this chat box, um, drop us a line and we'll, we'll make sure we get that um, information to you. Hang on, I'm just going to check the Q&A. As we come out of lockdown, are you planning some visits to us of your facility with limited hugging? Um, I can I can probably answer half of that one, uh, Michael, and we probably are going to plan some some tours as best we can when the restrictions lift. Um, I can't guarantee a hug, to be honest, but um, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, that's um, that's something we're planning on doing for sure. Can I add on that one, Jim, that we, we're also working with our visualization team, uh, the, the centers that are part of the group, like the AFRC. We, we are developing virtual tours to, to help people experience both the, the virtual reality experience, but also get an early uh, access to some of the, the, the materials and the equipment that we will have in the center. And and for me, just, just to add, um, we, we do have a lot of... Uh, things in the pipeline from a content development perspective, but uh, we always welcome conversations with industry because by understanding your needs, we can better align our programs and we can work with you to help uh, develop materials that we know will be specific for your organization. So again, uh, please get in touch if you are interested to, to, to support the, the up upskilling of your workforce. Thanks, Jose. Um, sure, I don't know if there's anything you want to add from a from, uh an overall skills perspective? No, not, not many times, Jim. No, I think David Milliken had his hand up. I don't know if he's, he's popped it down again. David, I, su I suggest you've got a question. Maybe if you want to pop it in the, the chat box, if that's possible. I, I, did, I did see David's hand up, but I, I couldn't let him break the rules. <laughs> No, David knows we're, we're here to answer these questions whenever, whenever they answer. Uh, we've got another observation from uh, Sanoj. It would be a great opportunity if the funding is facilitated to international research programmes seeking students like me. I would love to have the conversation with the respective dignitaries. Um, absolutely, Sanoj, the, the, the communication channels are open. Um, we, we, we've got the contact details on the presentation. Feel free to, to, to get in touch. I think the, the respective dignitary in that case would probably be you, Dorothy. Um, and I guess just picking up on, on what you know Jim said earlier on, and, and Hosey as well. Look, you know we're we're here to help, so please feel free to, to come and engage with us, um, and we'll, we'll have that conversation, work out together how we can take manufacturing forward. Um, that's what we're here to do. No problem, Michael. See you soon. He's leaving because you can't give him a hug. <laughs> <laughs> I can't commit to just end, but... <laughs> oh, hang on. Um... Okay, diversification is often as much about business skills and awareness as much as technical. Can you outline how in this can help here? Yeah, it's a good question, David. And as you know, um, so there's a couple of elements to that. I think I think we've been working very closely with um, Skills Development Scotland, uh, with the scale around meta skills and, and how we introduce that type of thinking to the apprenticeship program as we go forward and, and MetaSkills itself is one of the CPD courses that, that, that Jose is, is, um, is running um, I think as well and it's, it's something that um, is quite close I know to the heart of the team is that we have to make sure that we don't in a, in a digital world in particular that we don't just keep focusing on the technical because those wider business skills are just as important and that's why we're touching on for the graduate placements, for example, 
that it, it could be a wee stretch out from STEM, get different types of people because we, from a quality perspective or, or a procurement perspective, um, these are skills that need to be learned in the, in the digital manufacturing world as well. So yeah, absolutely take on board what you're saying. And even the, I think that the course, I don't know if you can see the panel, but I think the course that Stuart referenced as well would be something that would, would help to that, going to work that as well. So well, that's a good question, the question on um, diversification with respect to business skills and that further awareness. So you know, we, we do have that in our, on our uh, radar. David, thanks. And just maybe add to, to Jim's point in terms of the broader diversification piece. So we have you know, put in a piece in uh, NTTF2 and waiting to hear if that comes off and that's run about um, diversity and inclusion. So working with organisations such as Equate Scotland and AFBE um, to make sure that we are you know, representing the whole of Scotland. So um, next question we have from, I can't see who that is, but we've got a question around, would the meta skills be embedded into the frameworks and evidenced as naturally occurring, as naturally occurring evidence? So if we take the foundation apprenticeship um, project as a, as a rough example to work on around that, we would probably do something with the, with the, the boys and girls that are doing that around We've got some work that's been done by SDS on meta, meta skills to sort of baseline that awareness in, initially of, of what they have, and then revisiting that at the end of their placement or at the end of their end of their course to see um, what progress has been made around that, what the differences are, and and how does that how is that um, embedded into the the approach that they would take to to problem solving, really. So, yeah, that the the main idea from the entire apprenticeship family is to make sure meta skills is embedded across all of those um, parts of it. And then Skills Development Scotland are, are clearly very, very strong, as are, as are other colleges. But skills Development Scotland are really strong in, in the governments and the understanding of these things. We work very closely with, with Skills Development Scotland and other partners, as, as Stuart pointed out at the start of the presentation. Feels like a wrap there if there's no more questions forthcoming. Um, but if you can fill in the, the survey, we'd be delighted to hear from you. Uh, but equally, just get in touch with us and, and have a conversation. Thanks, Stuart. Okay, thanks very much, everyone, for joining us today. I uh, hope you enjoyed today's webinar. And thanks to our speakers from the NMIS Manufacturing Skills Academy, Dorothy, Jim, Hosey and Stuart. Um, as Stuart just mentioned there, we will send out a survey um, shortly after this webinar. And if you don't mind taking a few moments to complete it, um, your feedback does help us shape future webinars. We do have one next week on the 19th of May, next Wednesday, which is on the NMIS Digital Factory. If you're interested in that, you'll find more details on our website at nmis.scot. And just again, thanks very much for joining us and we'll bring the webinar to a close. Thank you.